All right, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Evans Garage. And today I'm going to be working on a couple projects for Old Blue. Uh, the first thing before I get to my auxiliary fuse block setup is I'm gonna be upgrading my battery terminals. So these are military style battery terminals that I'm gonna be changing over the stock ones. Uh, a couple issues with the stock ones, typically that you'll find on first gens is they'll, they'll be quite beat up and people are just using screwdrivers or hammers to to get them on the terminals or uh, they'll get beat up as well as the the wires themselves will start to come apart from the from the terminals and then that'll expose some of the copper it'll start to corrode you might have issues with that um, another common issue is the tips of these uh, on the terminals themselves will start start to break off from people uh, clamping them on too hard and um, another thing that uh, happens is uh, people will start to put on accessories and then they'll overload uh, the current terminals and just keep adding more and more and more. So you've got like, you know, five, 10 wires off the positive terminal of the battery. So the goal today is to really neaten up the wiring in Old Blue. And I'm gonna do that by installing an auxiliary fuse box setup that is uh, switched and it has both constant and switched uh, fuse circuits. But the kind of prerequisite to that to make that a little bit neater is to upgrade the battery terminals themselves. So that's what this video is going to be focusing on is um, upgrading the battery terminals themselves. A couple things you're, you're going to need that are special to this project. Obviously the battery terminals themselves. Um, I've got some 2 watt lugs for the positive and the negative uh, that go to the starter and the engine block. Um, you'll need something to cut the the large wires themselves, um, some marine grade connectors for the smaller uh, wires that are on the factory terminals. Uh, you'll need some heat shrink, uh, also marine grade. And this is a hydraulic crimping tool. So whenever you're using uh, lugs like this, the best way to, to uh, attach them to the wires themselves is to uh, use a crimping method. So this is what I've got the crimping tool for. Um, I'll link everything that I use for this project in the description box below and I'll show you how to do it all. All right, so we're here out at the truck now. Um, as you can see, like I said, the battery terminals themselves will get quite beat up. Um, the fronts of these will start to crack off. These ones haven't yet. Here's the positive side. Um, they'll get loaded up with many terminals. Uh, the sheathing themselves will come start to come off from the terminals. And then it looks like on the negative side here, my negative wire is really starting to come loose. I can probably even pull that loose, which is gonna cause all sorts of issues for your chassis ground. And just to make a point, I wiggled that out just using a little bit of force from my hand. Now I can only imagine over time with the vibrations of the truck, uh, that just loosening itself on its own. So more the reason to be doing these uh, terminal upgrades. I'll throw up the um, factory wiring diagram to show you um, what everything from the factory is wired to. So if you have any additional circuits on here um, that you aren't uh, quite aware of what they are, um, I'll sh show you what is and is not factory. On here, there's only one thing that is not factory, and that's this wire going down to the uh, wiring for the trailer brake controller. Um, the, the factory wiring is this two watt wire that goes to the starter. Uh, this is, this pink wire goes to your uh, hazards. This, there's a thicker black wire goes down to your fusible links, and then these two fusible links go to your grid heaters. And then on the ground side, this ground goes to your chassis ground on the core support, and then this um, larger ground goes down to the left side of your engine. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the negative terminal um, of the battery. And then I'll disconnect the positive as well. Okay, I'm going to start by snipping the chassis ground and then I'll take my large cutters here and then take off or cut this 2 watt wire. Okay, I'm going to try and cut it as close to the terminal as I can. There we go. There's the old terminal. Okay, now I'm going to measure how far uh, to strip the wire back. I'm going to go right where it starts to um, bend in there. That's how much wire I'm going to cut back. Mark it with my knife, and then I'll cut around with my knife. Okay, got the sheathing off. Now you can see a little bit of the green uh, corrosion where the sheathing meets the wire. That's what we're trying to prevent 
Okay, and I'm just gonna take a scuff pad here and clean up the outside of the wire a bit. Okay, I just wanted to show you one nice thing about these battery terminals. So they're both labeled and uh, they're actually slightly different sizes because on a battery, the negative terminal is slightly smaller than the positive terminal. So if I take my negative terminal, you can actually see, well, on both these terminals, they're actually tapered if you look down them and the negative terminal won't fit well on the positive it'll only fit well on the negative and same with the positive so if I try to take my positive and put it on the negative it's too big and they fit nice onto their respective terminals before I crimp on the lugs I'm going to clean up the studs of the battery and then install the terminals the nice thing about these terminals is uh, when you install them, um, you can install them permanently and then you can actually take this bottom stud off for when you're wiring accessories to them. So you never actually have to keep taking these off and putting them back on, which is a nice feature because you won't damage them. Okay, I had to trim the sheathing back just a bit more, um, so I'm at a good spot now. So I will. So I'll put that on, try to get all the strands in there. All right, so I'm gonna take this uh, terminal and just align it to its most uh, natural position here, like rotation-wise, make sure it's in a good spot. And then I've got my hydraulic crimping tool. Um, I'm taking my largest dies here, it says size 70, and then I'll use that die to crimp it down on the wire. Okay, I've got it crimped down as far as I can go. Now I'll back it off. So there's the crimp. I'm definitely not pulling that off. And what I should have done was I put, I should have put my heat shrink on before I crimp this, but I believe I'll be able to slip it over anyways. I'll take my heat gun and heat shrink on and heat up the new heat shrink and then for good measure i'm actually just going to take some of my marine grade heat shrink and it has adhesive on the inside so that stuff that comes with the military style battery terminal um, is kind of cheap doesn't have adhesive on the inside this stuff is much thicker um, and seals much better so i'm going to just go ahead and put that over top of uh, the one that it came with and then shrink it down Okay, I'm going to redo my body ground now. Okay, what I'm going to do with this wire is put uh, marine grade terminals on each end with new heat shrink. Uh, this end's going to have 3 8 uh, diameter on it so it can bolt right to here. And then this end I'm just going to change so that way that factory screw can go through there again. Alright, I've got my new terminals on with my new heat shrink. Now we can go ahead and assemble the whole negative terminal. We gotta put our sheath over first. And then we can slide it on up, cover up the negative terminal for a nice clean install. Okay, now we will cut off the positive terminal. Go. There's the terminal. So we've got our uh, two odd cable to the starter, the pink to the hazard wire, these two to your grid heaters, and then this one goes to your fusible link duct foot. Okay, now so for these three wires, I'm going to go ahead and put the terminals on. We'll start with the one that goes to the fusible links here. This is the black wire, and then I'll cut back some of the tape and rewrote the pink wire and then go ahead and put my 2 out lug on the large cable. All right, I've got my new lug on the positive terminal for the battery. Uh, this is the wire going to the starter. What I'm gonna do is just wire this on 
to the terminal for now, and then I'll show you a couple things I'm going to do for my new auxiliary fuse block setup. All right, at this point I'm going to wire um, my factory wiring that was on the positive terminal over to this bus bar that I just installed as a part of my fuse box setup. So my, the two wires on the left to my grid heaters, the pink wire to my hazards, and then uh, the far wire on the right to my fusible links. You're all going to get wired right to this bus bar, which will be after, after my circuit breaker. Okay, so at this point, that's all there really is to installing these battery terminals. Um, what I'm doing with my factory ones, as I've stated before, is running running them to this positive bus bar and uh, through this circuit breaker, so that way I can shut off all the 12 volt to the truck if I want to. And this is my main circuit uh, breaker for the entire truck. If you choose not to get a positive bus bar, you can just run these circuits um, either to the the back or the front. Uh, just keep in mind you'll have to have a stud that has a 3 8 diameter hole that can fit on that back bolt and then you'll just run those factory wires out the back on this side. And then that cleans it up nice on and then they've got both these covers. We'll keep them nice and dry and corrosion free. I'll continue on wiring with my auxiliary fuse block and then once I have the entire thing done I'll show you the finished product. Here's what I've got so far. Okay, so here's a look at the uh, mostly finished product. Um, minus I've got to do a bit of trimming to make that fuse block cover fit because of those four aug wires. Um, I've got my gauges installed to that fuse block. I'm going to install my CB on there next. But uh, this is pretty much mostly wraps up the battery terminal project as well as my fuse block project. All right, so that wraps up the install job of these uh, military style battery terminals. I've got uh, my new terminals on and my auxiliary fuse box setup uh, completely installed and um, that wraps up both those jobs. So up next I'm going to be working on installing my CB radio and I'll show you how to do that one. Thanks for watching guys. Cheers.